France and booking a place in the semi-final with a 2-1 victory. Uh, Chua Meni with a great finish early on. We see France take the lead. England, though, would grow into the game and it would be a Harry Kane penalty. In nine minutes into the second half, would Sealand get the equaliser? Then Giroud making it 2-1. Almost straight from the kickoff, England awarded a penalty. Harry Kane putting it over the bar. England out. France then through to the final four to face Morocco. Uh, Julian Laurent is with us, as is Steve McManaman, Craig and Ali here in the studio. Before we get the English and French view, I thought from all the matches we've seen, this was the best match with regards to football of the tournament. <clears throat> Arguably, yes. Uh, you know, normally, before we've sat and watched England at elite level, late on World Cup four years ago, Croatia, uh, semi-final, outplayed, outthought as the game went on. And I kind of think as tournaments have evolved, that's where they've been against the better teams, but, but not today. Yeah, they'll be licking their wounds, they lost the game and it's all about results. But France, in my opinion, can find themselves pretty fortunate to get that. I thought England, after a not rocky start, but you know, not able to control the French quick passing, particularly on the right side, not the left with Mbappe, the right with Dembele playing around Shaw. Once they got control of that, I felt England dominated the game. They worked Hugo Lloris. Uh, they never panicked. They created chances. You know, Apomacano got rolled on two or three occasions. Could have cost them. It didn't. And I thought England, by the result and maybe one or two of the finishes, and obviously the penalty, mm. I thought England actually put on a really, really good performance, but they're out. Proper match this, wasn't it? Two big boys. Two really big boys. Not pretend big boys, but two really big boys in the middle of the ring going at it. Now, one team better at times, the other team better at others, but what you had was two teams getting after each other with high quality with elite level of execution, with tough decisions for the referee, with quality of execution at times with the passing and the final touch. There was everything and anything that you want from a game of this magnitude. That looked like a quarterfinal. In fact, we can only hope that the final of this tournament lives up to what England against France was in the quarterfinals. All right, do I start with France or England? I suppose ah. let's start with France, as they as they as they're the winner. Oh, Frank the Buff late. <laughs> oh, oh, thanks for turning up, Frank. Uh, how did you see it? Well, I have to agree with the guy. I think it was a great game to watch. Even if uh, in both sides it wasn't perfect, I think England are mostly more control of the ball uh, and the game, you know, overall. And um, and France can be, yeah, of course, fortunate to uh, to go through. Uh, it would have been a different matter if uh, uh, maybe end of the game if uh, Harry Kane would have scored his second pen. Um, but uh, that's what it is. Football is about details. And uh, I know that uh, uh, Hugo Lloris has been very much criticized by the British or English uh, uh, newspapers. I think he gave a right answer that he's still a top-notch uh, goalkeeper and did what they had to do today uh, to, to save uh, like six times uh, the, 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 the French goal. So, so, you know, everything was not perfect, but I enjoyed the game because he went from a side to another side. Any team could have won that game mm. and uh, he went on the French side, but um, let's say I'm happy, but I will be very humble with that, uh, with that wow. win. Wow. <laughs> the, the word is humble, Macca, in case you didn't pick that <laughs> up in England. <laughs> we didn't know that was Frank in Frank's humble. lexicon. <laughs> Frank humble. No chance. Hey, Macca, a, a weird kind of feeling from an English perspective because they left pretty much everything out there on the pitch, which in other tournaments you can argue they didn't. I totally agree, mate. And I agree with what, what Craig said. I thought, you know, four years ago against Croatia, we had um, question marks after the performance. Even when the final in the Euros, I had question marks about the performance. I didn't today. I thought he played really well, particularly in the second half. Um, and as, as Frank said, in these games, there's just small details. That's all it is that separate one team and the other. I thought it was the best quarter final we've seen. I thought these two teams were really stand outside, actually. It was a pity that one had to lose. But I think the English players can go away from this tournament with their heads held high. I thought it was a really good performance, even though they got knocked out in the quarterfinals. They went out to a really good team and they went out playing really well. And I think, you know, Gareth playing four at the back and put more creative players on. I thought uh, I thought they acquitted themselves really well. So no complaints. Of course, they've gone out and it's upsetting to a certain extent. But the way they played, I thought, um, you know, they, they did themselves proud. Who needs Kareem the dream, Jules? <laughs> 
Uh, you always need Kareem the Dream. No, I don't always, think you but, do. <laughs> well, I mean, what a game. Well, what a game, to be fair, to, to, to be watching here. You could feel the tension around the stadium between the fans. It was, I agree with the boys, everything the boys said. I think those games come down to thin margin. This is not the best team that won tonight. England were the better side. I don't think there's any argument about that. There's no debate. But France have that killer instinct. They've got that, that belief all the time that if you don't put your chances, we will take one, we will have just one and we will score it. And Giroud had one just before the goal mm. where Pickford made a good save, a save that you expect Pickford to make. But then Giroud spoke after the game and said, I was praying God that he, he give me another chance. And the second chance came straight after on that wonderful ball by Griezmann who had a masterclass today. I think when you've got a player like that, whatever team you are, if you have a player like Antoine Griezmann in your team, especially now that he plays in that much more deeper role in midfield and you can control games like that, you can have such an impact on the game, then you have a, a good chance of winning a game like this. I think there's no doubt France created in that chance Giroud had before the goal and I think I felt a little bit sorry in some sense for Maguire because I actually think it was John Stones who just wasn't switched on at all and by the time Maguire got across to the header, it was too late. You know, I mean, Stones never even looked around him when that ball was coming in. But I think France's chances, not them all, but came about through maybe a poor bit of possession from England, where England controlled uh, their build-up and their chances. And, you know, there's no doubt Hugo Lloris, this was a great save, by the way, but there's no doubt Hugo Lloris was the busy of the two goalkeepers. Look, that's why they're world champions, to get the job done. But I thought, in particular, Bellingham, I thought Rice was outstanding. Yeah. Absolutely outstanding. But I don't blame the referee at all, but he worried me. He looked to me as if he was sort of out his depth a little bit, running around that field, and I got a sense both benches were looking out, including the French one, going, this guy's going to do something stupid in a minute. Yes, yeah. You know, to not see, I mean, amongst other things, to not see the challenges on Saka, to not see the push on Mason Mount, to have to go to the monitor and look at it for as long, just, just sort of worried me. I don't think... I, I, my head, I, I can't get my head around the, the hurricane... And I don't know if you've seen anything, Jules, over there, but we haven't seen anything with the first penalty call on Harry Kane. We never saw, and I'm presuming, Jules, it was just outside the box uh, in the first half, but we never got a definitive angle mm. on that. Did you guys see anything over there? We had a few. We had a few where we were, to be fair. It looked like, some of, on some of the angles, it looked like it's, it, the, the contact is outside just outside the box, there's others where it looked like he's right on the line and the line is part of the box and it should have been a pen. Uh, it was a call that the, the English players didn't really understand at all, I have to be honest, that the referee didn't even go to see, to see the monitor, which I think means that VR must have said in his ear, the foul is outside mm. of the box. We can't, we can't give a free kick here. VAR can only give a penalty. If it's outside of the box, you can't do anything. So plays on. Uh, see, I don't have a problem with that. Mm. I don't have an issue with it. If it's, if it's outside, it's not a penalty. So it's the angle. Yeah. We, we are the audience. The <laughs> audience was, I don't know how many millions, billion, whatever it was around the world. The whole thing with VAR is get a decision right and show the audience. Yeah. I, I, and we didn't see it. Um, where did this performance from Anton Griezmann come from, considering what we've seen him do at club level? Well, he's done nothing at club level. So be honest, yeah. Atleti. And the freedom uh -huh. with which he's playing offensively and appearing in all sorts of different spaces, and not only appearing, but taking those sort of touches away from pressure and then finding the next pass and then going and combine and getting on the ball again and switching it over to the other side. Always an outlet, always a guy giving this team a, an option through the midfield and giving you some work defensively as well. I thought one of my concerns for France coming into this match that the midfield of England would be able to control the pace of the game because they would expose the fact that Antoine Griezmann is also playing in that midfield. And you're going to force him to defend instead of having an impact on the attacking half. And while the midfield of England was really good, I thought that Antoine Griezmann individually was able to give that outlet to France all the time. It wasn't Mbappe all the time. Mm. It was more Antoine Griezmann getting on the ball and then he was finding the next pass. To your question... I have no idea where the performance is coming from because given what we have seen and the evidence of what we have seen from him at Atletico Madrid, it was a player who was on the wrong side of his career. Yep. And then you watch him play with France and you go, oh, well, that's world class. I haven't seen it in a while, but that's world class. That's how good Anton Griezmann has been. Give credit to him, any first goal, brilliant. Really good finish, eh? Oh, I mean, no back left whatsoever, no run up. Not great from England, obviously. It came from that sort of, I think it was a Pumacano challenge on Saka. 
all the way up the field. You meant the clear foul on Saka. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, again, we didn't get many angles of that, but it could have been. It could have been, and certainly from an English point of view, I'm sure they... they I heard the best... I heard one of the be I've heard a few crackers in this World Cup, but I heard one of the best ones today on the broadcast. Uh, <laughs> this was that Jude Bellingham's big mistake in closing down... Uh, uh, Chumeni was he should have kept his legs closed. Right, OK. Now, I haven't seen yet, and 20-odd years of playing and watching, I haven't seen anybody yet able to close the ball down with their legs yep. closed, unless you're going to tie your legs together. I mean, <laughs> just incredible. It was unfortunate. The ball went through his legs, maybe Pickford saw it a bit late, but it was a bullet of a shot. Uh, Maka, we know that the English media love to cast a villain when they go out of big tournaments. Who's filling that role here? <laughs> Nobody, to be honest, mate, because, of course, you can't necessarily blame um, Harry Kane. He's upset enough because he's missed the, the, his second penalty. But, you know, he's uh, equal Wayne Rooney's record. He's now, you know, up, up there with the leading goal scorer for England. I think they played well. If they didn't play well, I think they would have found some reason yeah. to complain. But the fact that they played well, the fact that there was a number of decisions that you can always turn to and say that never went our way, that didn't go our way, which is which was correct. I thought the referee was poor as well. Uh, I think they can look to those factors rather than try and blame a particular player or a, you know or, or a particular mistake that happens in the game. You know, it was a good Giroud goal. You know, it was a great cross from Griezmann. England went down the other end, missed a penalty. You know, they had a chance in the last minute where Rashford hit a really nice free kick, but it just didn't dip enough. Sometimes in games like that, it goes your way and other times it doesn't. How many times you say, you know, sometimes the best team doesn't win competitions, but you just need a little bit of luck here and, here and there to get you to where you want to be. And um, France got that today. And they're the world champions. And the fact that they got over the line and got the results, even though at the back sometimes they look really debatable, um, you know, it shows what a great team they are because they've had their injury problems as well since the start of the tournament. So you have to re realise that. You're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't if you're Harry Kane, aren't you? I mean, uh, so yeah. we saw Messi taking a couple of penalties yesterday to, with, with great aplomb. He's bulleted that first one in. I mean, the worst case scenario is, uh, I mean, somebody else steps up and Messi's and Harry's, Harry's the coward for not taking the second, do you know what I mean? Yeah. The worst scenario for him was not only is he having to wait and it's his second one, it's his Tottenham teammate. Mm. I mean, it's not like it's mm. a goalkeeper, it's not seeing him every day. It, it makes it even more difficult. Uh, Frank Ooh. wants an attention. Oh. Frank? <laughs> <laughs> now, because in that matter, I had a chance to interview, uh, to interview Hugo, Hugo Lloris, you know, about those, those penalties. And I say, what, what went through it, your mind? And did you train with Harry Kane, you know, you being in goal and him training to score goals? He said it happens sometimes, you know, and uh, well, you know, you just pray. And it's even more difficult to guess, you know, what's going to happen when you play and you, you have to uh, uh, receive a penalty against uh, one of the best players in the world that you know perfectly, but you never know what's going to happen. He said, the only thing I can say, he said, even if I'm happy that we won, I feel very sorry for him because he's a great guy, he's a friend of mine, and he was very respectful, respectful towards uh, Harry Kane, and that he felt very sad for him. And I had a chance also to interview Didier Deschamps after the game, and, he, and I asked him what was the weirdest thing that he saw today, and he said, you know what, I was about to substitute Olivier Giroud before he just scored the goal wow. uh, by Marcus Thuram and uh, also Dembele by Coman. And he said, that's crazy because they were ready to come on and, uh, and he, he scored the goal and said, I left him after. And it would have been maybe completely different if uh, I would have uh, substituted uh, Giroud before, before he scored. You know who the happiest person after uh, Harry Kane misses a penalty is? Teo Hernandez. You, yeah, you want to explain to me what in the world is he doing? Oh, yeah. yeah. The ball is well <laughs> over not only yeah. his head, but obviously Mason Mount's head as well. There is no chance for Mason Mount to get on this ball. And the fact that you don't even see the ball and you just go and shoulder charge somebody from behind, what do you think was going to happen? It's incredible to me that a defender at this level does that, that he's unable to judge the flight of the ball and see that he's going over his head, over Mount's head, into the arms of Hugo Lloris, no issues, no danger whatsoever, and now you have yourself a penalty. Frank, I don't think this is one of your interviews, one of your many interviews, it sounds like, <laughs> uh, but Rabio said that it was justice that Harry Kane missed the penalty because it should never have been a penalty in the first place. 
<laughs> I cannot agree with that. You know, that's a clear foul. That's a clear penalty. I think if there are doubts on the penalty was uh, not given, you know, in the first uh, in the first half at the beginning of the game, uh, I didn't really see if it was on the line or before the line. But totally agree with the two penalties with the, with the ref. You know, Chouamini makes a, a big foul on the first one. And as uh, as um, Ali said, you know, I don't even understand what Teo Hernandez was trying to do. Because, as he said, he couldn't catch the ball and he, he really pushes uh, Mason uh, uh, on his back and that's a clear foul, nothing to complain about. <laughs> for, all the guy, the, for all the good Harry Kane's done, and I'm sure there'll, there'll be more, this is going to be the one thing that sort of sticks in his craw. It's, well, it's, it's, it's going to be tough to swallow. And I think what he's trying to do, I might be wrong, I, I, think he's absolutely, I think he's tried to go straight down the middle, and he's, unless I'm wrong, but I think he's tried to go straight down the middle high right. And just ballooned it. I mean, I, I, I was half thinking he's going to try the Penenka, and I thought, no, no, he can't be doing that. But I think he's tried to go. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's second guessing the goalkeeper here because he's wh he's whizzed it across him for the first one. So now it's a game of bluff, and I think he's thinking, well, he's going to dive, so I'm going to fire it right down the middle. Yeah. You lean back a smidge on that. And, and that's history. Uh, Macca, it's interesting because uh, a lot of knives were already getting sharpened before the start of this tournament regarding Sa Gareth Southgate's future. But I can't imagine after that performance, despite losing in the quarterfinals, mm -hmm. many are calling for him now to be sacked. No, I think it's the other way around. I think people want him to stay on, to be honest. And, um, I know his contract's another couple of years until after the Euros, but... I think we see progression and this team is exciting and there's a lot of creativity there. And there's a lot of youth in this uh, England side and he leads the team really well, doesn't he? You know, there's no um, there's no stories that come out of uh, the England camp now. <laughs> Everybody seems to no be No dentist happy. chair, Macca. No. Excuse me? No dentist chair. <laughs> no dentist chair, no, none of that. All. If only, they might have won if they went in the dentist chair, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> Maka, we've been. I feel like we've been too positive here for an England side who who had the potential to go and win all of this. Yeah, of course we are, mate. But if you look at the other games, and you look at Holland last night, the way they played and they went out, and the way you know Brazil, I think England played played the the, the best that best out of all the teams that have lost. And sometimes you just lose. You know, last year when they won. Against Denmark in the semi-finals, there was, you know, there was uh, sorry in the Euros, there was still questions to be asked. But I don't necessarily think there was today. You could look at the game, you saw how well England played, you saw how they lost and why they lost. There was extenuating, extenuating circumstances why they lost, and sometimes that happens. You know, all the boys who play football matches where you know you were the better team, but somehow. You know, you lose the game by, by you know, a, a twist of fate here and there. And sometimes you just have to take it on the chin. Say, you know what? We played well. We made loads of chances. We just couldn't convert. They converted theirs. And there's nothing to get um, really downhearted about. You know, there was a, a, when they played USA. We sat here and went, spoke uh, negatively about England's performance. The fact that they got through and the fact that they went out today, I think you can speak positively about it. I think you take every game as it comes. You know England are progressing really well. There's not a lot between them and the world champions. Um, mm. If anything, they were the better team with the better stats. So you can take it at face value. But I think we can be positive, really, with the performance tonight. I'm, I'm not English, right? No, Ali. No, not no. at all. No. And yet, I am left feeling a whole lot better about England right now mm. than I was after the final of the Euros. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So even though they lose in the quarterfinals, I feel better about this team than I did after missing out on an opportunity to be progressive, to be uh, aggressive in the manner in which they approach the game, and they did not against Italy. They did against France. It just didn't work out. This is the great Jim Telfer, your rugby man as well. Yes. Once said in the British and Irish lines, before the game, he said, defeat doesn't worry me. It's performance. Because we've all suffered defeats right. quite a lot. Many of us. <laughs> I, I, but, you know, and I think a lot of people were waiting for Southgate's team to be negative, to be coy, to be timid, to be pedestrian. And they were not. Ultimately, it's a results-driven business. But I, I, there was a lot to enjoy about the, this World Cup, this game, this performance, who they played against. You know, against the USA, they weren't great, mm. England. They yeah. were not great. Yeah. They were allowed to be bullied at times by an average US side. This is not an average, I mean, it's not the best French side in the history of French football, but it's a good French side with a lot of areas that can hurt you. And I thought England were really, really good. And there are, you know, a 
couple of inches of leaning back penalty away from taking it to extra time and a great Hugo Lloris performance, apart from the couple of crosses he flapped at. Yes. I think some of the saves he made, you'd expect him to make. Yes, exactly. You weren't like in the corner they were at him and he yeah. reacted. The Bellingham re reaction was good. It was good, but it was sort of at him. But, yeah, he flapped a couple of times. But, no, it's hard to criticise England's general mm. performance. Uh, uh, Alexis is with Jules. I'm sorry, Alexis, you've got to be stuck with him after this. <laughs> Actually, Dad, I would tell you, we're freezing out here, but I hope you remember that I did pick France to win this one when we were stood out here with NATO. And Jules also was on that show, and he says, I don't know, my heart says France, but my head says England. And Jules, did I not tell you, have a bit more faith. You have the experience at this level, even though Mbappe didn't have the best of nights. Look at your boy Grissy. Yeah, he was outstanding. We've said that already, I think. Kylian didn't do much, you're right, and I think Walker defended very well for most of the time. But the one time when they, when they went in numbers on him for that first goal, a simple one-two with Upamecano, then Declan Rice is a little bit too short, and then that unbalances completely the English defence. And after that, the ball goes out wide, comes back, Griezmann, Chouameni, and Bellingham is that half-second too short because I think of what happened with Kylian when they tried to go at him with three players, and that's all he did. That was enough. I'm happy with that. Of course, you're happy with France going through. We both of us, we live in London. We know exactly what the vibe is going to be like there. I got to speak to a couple of the fans after. Not many England fans, as you can imagine, Dan wanted to talk to us. This definitely <laughs> does hurt because they felt they did everything right. But they're still having questions, despite what the boys said, still having questions about Gareth Southgate after this one. Where do you stand on that? I think, I think it's hard to blame him, really. I, if Saka wasn't injured, I'm not really sure why Saka came off. And he brought on Sterling, who'd been in London for five days. That sub didn't really make much sense for me. But apart from that, they played well. They were a bit nervous at the beginning, we said that. After that, I think it's hard to put the blame on, on Salgate. However, this killing instinct that we've been talking about, you know, that killing instinct, you need to, to learn how to get it because those games are won with that killer instinct. Lights are turning off on us here at the Albay <laughs> Stadium. It's almost time for us to go. It's very windy, so back to you, Dad. Okay, thank you very much. Much appreciated, guys. Apologies for the uh, audio problems we had there as, uh, as they can go and warm up. What next? How about Mbappe? The semis. Yeah, what happened to Mbappe? Uh, <laughs> did it, was it just that England did a good job on him? Uh, well, maybe. But this is the question that I would ask Kylian Mbappe. Early on in the second half, the one time that he faced up uh, Kyle Walker and actually tested the speed over distance which let me tell you elite level speed something that I am not familiar with and I don't think any of us are familiar with these guys are running side by side and Kylian Mbappe is able to turn the corner on yep. Kyle Walker why if you have proven that you can get around that guy why are you coming short to so many balls why are you looking to combine five yard passes why don't you use this asset who it's a dominant asset. Above everybody else in the world, it's a dominant asset that he's able over distance to create separation from the fastest guy England has defending, that you've proven you can turn the corner on him. Why not continue to, at the very least, have those isolation plays and try to exploit that instead of settling for the five-yard passes and coming into the crowd? There was opportunities for him to run away from the crowd, and he was coming towards the crowd. When he was able to stretch his legs, you can see what he is as a player. I just don't quite understand why he wasn't setting himself up for more of those plays and more of those sequences. What was your biggest concern with the French performance today, Frank? Well, I guess defensively, what they offered to the, today and the, the mistakes that they, they made. Uh, and... Um, at that level, you know, you pay the price every time you, you make those mistakes. And, uh, and it happened too many times, but we already talked about it. We knew that the front line was uh, very effective, that Rabio, Chouamini and Griezmann were doing the job. But we had some question marks about the back and, uh, and uh, it's still not resolved. Uh, yeah, maybe Hugo Lloris was fortunate to have the, the ball that he had to save, you know, because they were close to him. But at the end of the day, if uh, it wasn't on a good day, it would have been a, a drama for, for France. So I don't know what Deschamps can do uh, from now to, uh, to, to Wednesday against Morocco, uh, but he has to talk to his defense because they have to try to, 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 to make the, a better, to get a better um, performance that we, uh, we, we saw today because, uh, you know, it was uh, concerning, really, really much concerning today. Uh, before I let you go, Maka, who do you want to win now? Is it a case of anyone but France? 
um, no, not not particularly. I, I would like the best team to to win. I know that's that's an easy answer. So you know, France, Argentina. There's the stories around Argentina, of course, with Messi. Morocco's a great story, isn't it? I can't necessarily see them winning the way they the way they keep playing. But I just want the best side to win. And if that is France, so be it, you know, with the best players. It's great to see Mbappe still there. It's great to see Modric still there. Of course, it's great to see Leo Messi still there. And and then the story of, you know, Morocco and Hakimi and, and people like that. So it, it's been a really enjoyable World Cup. I made the best team win. I'm quite cool with it, actually. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.